there. I'm History of the Flash. People call me JD. And a whole end called Country, also known as just Hunter. And this is a Hero Story, episode 184. Welcome. A Hero Story is a podcast where we talk all things comics. That includes comic book movies, like yeah. one that just came out that I didn't see. Comic <laughs> book did. animation, comic book video games, and comic books themselves. You name it, we probably talk <laughs> about it. Uh, this week, Morbius, The Living Vampire, <laughs> starring Jared Leto, came out. And, Why am I laughing? <laughs> and one, one of two hosts foolishly saw it. Um, you can guess which one. That dummy. Literally, um, like, 20 minutes ago, I was in theaters. <laughs> like, I just ago, got home. 20 minutes ago, he was on the edge of his seat waiting for him to say, Dr. Michael Morbius, at your service. It didn't happen. <laughs> I, I'm not one to skip a comic book movie. Um, I mean, going way back to, like, even... I mean, since I was a kid, you know, I remember seeing Iron Man in theaters. Like, I, I remember seeing Sp- Spider Man. I remember seeing Spider Man two or Spider Man three in theaters. I mean, I saw so, Spider Man two in theaters. I I might have. I don't know. I was still like five years old, so I was very young. But anyway, <laughs> not the point. So I've always seen comic book movies in theaters, but this one, eh, few movies come around like this: Fan Four Stick, Green Lantern, Catwoman, <laughs> Morbius. It, oh yeah, it, it, it is it in that like, category. It looked like it was that level of bad. And for some reason, Hunter's like, so you're seeing it, right? And I was like, no. <laughs> and Hunter's like, no, no, you have to see it. And I was like, why? Because for the past year, we've done this podcast and probably have talked about it for like a year straight. In an ironic sense, though. Like, yes, oh, man, yes. Morbius is going to be that bad. It's mm-hmm. like when Fan Four Stick was releasing. Like, remember, like, the build up to that, like, how bad, like, everyone was talking about yeah. it. Like, everyone just knew it was going to be shit. Mm-hmm. I didn't I mean, see that some... one in theaters, but I, I watched did see it. that one in theaters. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I watched it as it came out on Disney Plus, actually. So Say that again. Fantastic. Movie. Uh, <laughs> More Beast Living Vampire. Say that again. Uh, yeah, so tell me, how was it? Uh, Drew, uh, Drew, our buddy Drew, who's been on the show before, gave it a 2 out of 10 in our uh, little Ooh. chat there, so... <laughs> not and I, and I said that's i said that's probably still rating it a little bit high so oh my uh, god i haven't even thought of a rating but here i'll just go over it <laughs> real quick just for the people that are just listening to this uh we'll also talk moon knight episode one and we'll also get to the comics of the week and as well as we weren't on last week uh there just wasn't many things out and there wasn't a lot of news but uh jd red rogues which came out by joshua williamson so he'll yep. go over that for this episode here uh spider and beyond also ended so i'll discuss that briefly i also read hulk this week but and there's some news but yeah uh, i saw morbius and uh let me just so, spoilers for morbius i know there's a lot of people that are not Whoa, dude, away. you can't spoil morbius don't spoil the morbius there isn't, there isn't anything to spoil <laughs> I was, I was first of all i feel like you kind of figure out the plot just from yeah. the commercials and like the trailers mm-hmm so uh, I guess I'll go over the good first. Um, sometimes when he jumps, it kind of looks like he teleports, and I thought that that was kind of a cool visual effect. <laughs> that that's about. It. <laughs> uh, that was that was a very lengthy was, good section. I'm gonna need a time to stamp for that. Some, I was trying to think. Say, okay, the movie starts, and it's like my first thought, like ten minutes, and I'm like, huh, this is fairly interesting. I mean, it's a doctor trying to find a cure for himself, and he's willing to do anything to get it. And then he gets it, and it's awful. <laughs> uh, movie starts with him getting the cure immediately. It's a short movie, but it feels four hours. I'm like uh, the Batman. Were you like checking movie. like your watch or like checking your phone at all? Like... Multiple times, <laughs> multiple times. I have my watch on it. <laughs> I'm like, man, this movie should be over by now. Oh, but the trailers played, so it's like, you know, I had like how many trailers played. Yeah, you're like trying to figure out the time in your head. Yeah. You're like, all right, so an hour and forty minutes. Right, the best, be the best part about this movie was the Multiverse of Madness trailer that played before. <laughs> like, uh, just like we thought, there's a, there's a character called Milo in this who we've been calling on the podcast Dark Morbius. <laughs> just as we thought he's in it, I will say quick review for Dark Morbius. When he gets his powers, there's a probably a minute long scene of him dancing in the mirror shirtless, but the camera is like stuck on his face in the center. So when he moves, the camera moves with him. It's like a TikTok filter and it's like way too long. And everyone felt uncomfortable in the theater. During that. First of all, I'm surprised there were multiple people in this theater. I thought it would just be you in there. It was packed. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. 
But the people laugh. Canada <laughs> loves Morbius. Apparently, there's people in the front row who <laughs> I don't understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Jared Leto movie is really good. I don't get that. I'm trying to think of everything that happened in this movie, but there really wasn't much. Okay, there's a father figure to the to Jared Leto and Dark Morbius. <laughs> That's what I'm calling them, I guess. Uh, Dark Morbius like slashes him because his the father figure doesn't accept who he is he's like you can't be a vampire he's like but i am a vampire and like slashes him so he's laying on the ground he calls jared leto and says i need help and then jared leto goes to him by the way it's daytime during the scene jared leto goes to him it's now nighttime he's laying on the ground bleeding out right and jared leto's like i have to get you to the hospital and he goes you have to stop him dead instantly how did he survive all day and then as soon as Jared Leto comes, he just, I don't know, that bothered me. <laughs> that's, that's what bothers you about this movie? Everything no, else is fine, but that scene? But I mentioned just before recording that uh, there's the line in the trailer, I am Venom. Just kidding, it's Dr. Michael Morbius. How can I help you or something like that? Your, your, fav- your favorite comic book scene ever in history. That was kind of cut. He says, so he goes to the guy, he says, I am Venom. And then the scene cuts. We don't get him hear him say. Was it like a, was it like kidding. a bad cut too? Like yeah, yeah. It's very sudden and it's like it felt it felt like there was more to that scene, which there was because in the trailer there is more to that scene. But this movie's false advertising. Release like the up. Leto cut of Morbius. <laughs> get it, it trending. Is, the the trailer has him like walking outside and you see the Spider Man PS4 in the framey suit in the background with the spray paint murder. That's not in the movie at all. No, of course not. Why would that be in the movie? Uh, I feel like they just put that in the trailer just to get like a little bit of traction of people talking about it. The, the whole plot of the movie is he, he becomes this vampire character and he's killing people. And so it's Dark Morbius. And so these two detectives are trying to stop them. And they are the worst detectives in the world. They let him go multiple times. They, they go to Morbius's girlfriend, love interest woman. <laughs> And they go like, I'll get to that in a second. But they go to her. They're just like, were you on this boat when uh, Morbius killed all these people? And she goes, I'm having a hard time remembering that night, detective. And they go, okay. And they leave. They don't question her anymore. They oh, story checked out. Walk out. They're like, okay. <laughs> I understand. People forget. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, Patrick and SpongeBob trying to open the door. To, to open Sesame. Well, I've done everything I can. <laughs> So right after that scene, they go to Morbius, who's in this building that's probably 20 feet tall, something like that, or 20, 20 stories, sorry, 20 stories tall. 20 feet like, tall? Yeah. What is it, a dollhouse? I don't know. It's about 20 stories tall, and they go to him, and they're just like, you're coming with us, we gotta ask you questions. So he starts to run, and he runs to this area where there's stairs going up. You know, like uh, in the Batman, when he's in the police building, he uses the grappling hook to get up to the roof? Yeah. There's a building like that, but way taller. They're in New York City. And Morbius is able to jump to the very top as the cops are catching him, gets to the roof, runs, goes to jump from roof to roof, but stops himself because he's like, I haven't done this before. Turns around and the police are right behind him. <laughs> like, how did you get 20 stories when he just I don't, it, teleporting again, cops? Again, that's your problem with this movie. <laughs> you so, went to go see Morbius. Okay, okay. You bought two tickets. I, I did. My yeah, we like I saw with my girlfriend. And even when that scene happened, she's like, "What? Does the cop have powers?" <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense how we got there that fast. Oh, okay. Well, I'll get end credit scene. Um. Well, I I, I did watch this online. So, uh, the the trailer show the vultures in this movie. He's only in the end credits. <laughs> What's up, Doc? He's he doesn't say that at all. Oh <laughs> my god! Release the Leto cut. So he's not in the movie until the end credit scene. It shows him just suddenly appear in a cell. And that, his only, that was like the worst scene I've ever seen. The only line is, I hope the food's better in this joint. And then that credit scene ends. <laughs> and then the second end credit scene, which isn't even the end of the credits, it says, well, I guess there's, there, there should be food in this joint, better food, whatever I just said. Then it says, Marvel presents Morbius. And then it's the next end credit scene. So it's like probably 10 seconds in between. <laughs> Did you see the other one? The, the one where he's in the vulture suit? Yeah. Yeah. What is that dialogue? Th- that was, who wrote that? It sounded like the the delivery of the dialogue too was awful. Like it's like yeah. they took the first take that Michael Keaton did and they're like, yeah, that's good. I mean, I don't think he was even, get that. Yeah, he was, he was 
definitely in like a booth or something just voicing it so bad because so vulture for those who didn't see it vulture goes to morbius if i, if I play on... the audio of it is it going to be like a problem or no i don't know oh gosh is it worth the risk does sony care because no one fucking cares about this movie <laughs> <laughs> I think it's worth the risk of a hero story ending. Let me let me let me pull it up real quick because like I I, I listened to that shit and I was like what? for context, uh, Morbius yeah, is here driving go, here on go, here the car. Co- yeah. So Vulture's landing like next to uh, next to Morbius, right? Like the big wings and like he's in the CGI. homecoming suit. Out, but I think a bunch of guys like us team up do some good. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Everything about that is so bad, and that's definitely not even Michael Keaton. He doesn't even take off the mask. Yeah. So it's just like, like it was just like a CGI figure, and they just had like Keaton do a voiceover. It's so bad. It, it, I figure we could do some good. All right. So, one take. But like Morbius is like driving, and then he stops, gets out of the car. And then Michael Keaton meets him in, in a field, or did they just find each other? Was this a meeting that was planned? Also, Michael Keaton isn't a vulture suit made of Stark tech. Yep. How did how did <laughs> he, he get that it on this new Earth? <laughs> how did he get that on, this Earth? on the ve- he's on the Venom universe Earth now? Because when he appeared, the, he had nothing. The Morbi- the MCU, the Morbius Cinematic Universe. <laughs> And he goes to Morbius. Says, they just got something to do with Spider Man. Like Morbius doesn't know who that is. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish um, Morbius had been like, "Who?" <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, "I don't know how I got here." And Morbius's reply is, "What are you talking about? Who are you? Who's Spider Man?" It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, interesting. What? Something you wouldn't say about this movie. And it's just a close up shot, like a medium shot of Morbius, but slightly tilted too. It's like, <sighs> listen, when when Venom got a movie right. I mean, I kind of questioned it, but at least Venom's like a pretty big character. Like he's yeah. held, you know, a lot of solo series. Mm-hmm. And when Joker got a solo movie, I questioned it. But like Joker's, you know, the biggest like DC he's comics DC's villain. biggest villain, yeah. Morbius is like not even like a top twenty Spider-Man villain. <laughs> I mean, to like uh, Tyler, a comic boy, uh, has said that in Morbius's first appearance, uh, Peter Parker has six arms. So Morbius's first appearance isn't even the most interesting thing about that issue. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> like, he's such a nothing burger of a character. <laughs> like, even then, it's like, what was... The... Okay, so in this movie... Oh, right, I want to talk about the love interest. So he works with this doctor to get the morbid... <laughs> powers, get the vampire powers. <laughs> and so she helps him out because she feels bad for him, right? Because he has the condition where he's struggling to walk. Uh, he gets the powers. And then she's like, all right, great. We're, we're, we're good and everything. Like, And he's like, yeah, we're good. Later on, hour later, they meet up again. First time, oops, first time since the start of this movie. You're so mic. excited about more reasons, <laughs> you're just destroying your mind. <laughs> they meet up again for the first time for like the last hour. And they're just, she's just like, how's your condition? And she cuts her hand by accident and he starts to like breathe heavily because blood. And then he's able to control himself though. And then they go up to the roof to get some fresh air. And she's just like, sorry, I was all Dracula on you. And she goes, well, I find Dracula a little a bit romantic. And he goes, close your eyes and she does and they kiss and it was like i thought they were like co-workers <laughs> like, there was no chemistry at all they had they shared like a single scene together before this <laughs> you think jared leto sent her a dead rat like he did to margot robbie <laughs> <laughs> but then dark morbius comes spoiler alert dark morbius kills her well beats her up right she's still alive Oh my, so th- reverse Morbius, how could you? <laughs> so, so seeing this, Morbius gets mad, goes to her, she's dying on the ground, and he goes, what do you do when someone's dying? You kiss them, obviously. So he goes to kiss her again, and as they kiss, it's hard to tell because it's nighttime and they're all wearing black and they're on a roof, but either she bites him or he bites her, but one of the, both their lips start bleeding. There's just blood on both their lips, but it's not implied who bit who. And so... Then Morbius seeing the blood starts to shoot, starts to eat her, essentially, right? And then he gets Yikes. really angry over this. So he fights Dark Morbius. And the last scene in the movie is he feats Dark Morbius by not even fighting. He just stabs him with a knife and he, Dark Morbius dies. 
bats. But Morbius starts to fly in the air with all the bats, and it's like this dramatic music, and then it cuts to the girlfriend, her doctor lady, who's still on the ground, and her eyes open, and then it cuts to Morbius flying again, and then the movie ends. She Morbius? So it's not even like an Avatar moment where her eyes like open and that's the end of the movie. Like it just cuts back to Morbius gliding around, not noticing. The editing in this movie sounds really bad. It's <laughs> like really choppy. Awful. It's awful. It's daytime, it's nighttime, it's daytime, it's nighttime. And it's like how many days go by in this? I I mean it's it's a Morbius movie, so I don't know. Like there like there were no expectations. Like if I did see this movie, I would have went in like this is gonna be the worst thing i've ever seen in theaters it so might, it might actually be that his love interest too uh she's being followed by the detectives because they were like wait we should actually question this woman instead of saying okay so she like runs through a market and she's like di- dipping and diving through crowds to get away from the detective she jumps on a bus that's going by she's barely stopping and jumps on gets on the bus sits there like who i lost him what's this on the ground a newspaper morbius is wanted and then right behind her morbius happens to be on that bus <laughs> and goes hey there stranger she's like what are you doing here how morbius just happened to be on the bus in this market that happened (laughs) the the great thing about this is no one who's listening to this has actually seen morbius and obviously i haven't seen morbius so you could be making up all these details and i feel like i'm not but but, but that's how bad these are that like you could just be shitting like throwing this shit out of your ass like who how did this movie get made i mean i gotta i gotta think that Sony owns like you know the Spider-Man. Oh no. <laughs> uh so J- JD just left the Zoom. <laughs> we we recorded the episode on Zoom. Now I'm talking about Morbius by myself. Uh-oh. I should probably pause this. Um, or I could improv. What did you think of Morbius? Or what did you think of the sound of Morbius? Oh good, he's joining again. Oh God, that scared me. I cannot do this. I cannot review Hulk 2003 again like I did that one time I did the podcast alone. What just happened? My screen just went black. My screen just went black and I thought Morbius was behind me. I was like, I, was like, <laughs> I did like a jump scare. Holy shit. I don't know. My, my screen just went completely black and then turned back on and then I was out of the Zoom call. Do you, oh my God. Do you have your computer plugged in and everything? Yeah, it wasn't a battery thing. The battery's full. That was really weird. Okay, that, that scared not, me not a lot gonna, for some reason. Question it. That was <laughs> Dr. Michael Morbius took me over. I'm just like, oh no, I'm talking about Morbius for myself my, now. My, my eyes open at the end. No, what, what I was saying is Sony owns the rights to like all the Spider-Man stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it's mind-boggling to me that like they haven't tried to do like a like spider-man 2099 or like miles morales oh, that or been great. like yeah. ben riley like why not try one of those projects like wouldn't that be much better than like let's do a morbius movie or let's do a silver sable like they're why? doing craven the hunters filming now and it's about craven being a hero like why not take Cra- one craven of wasn't heroes? in any like post-credit like thing right no it was just about both okay, cause I, cause I read something Vulture. online that mentioned craven but i i didn't see any that would have made more sense i feel like but or venom at least it's, do something in venom it's it's a it's a bad universe uh I hope so it, what i hope it just doesn't exist i guarantee kevin feige hates it more than anyone <laughs> <laughs> so so we've gotten to the point where it's time to rate it with a number what <laughs> is the number between one and ten that you rate morbius uh i do like when he jumps so, <laughs> i don't know it, it solid is, five seconds of the movie you like <laughs> it like i wish i could watch it with you and like harper and the other people like people do the podcast because it's like it's funny because it's awful <laughs> hunter hunter throughout the movie uh, yeah i was just like, it was it's boring it's really boring <laughs> like last thing last thing i have to say real quick morbius and dark morbius they're arguing over if people should die or not and then a bunch of police officers come and go like, freeze, put your hands up. So they both do it. And then Dark Morbius <laughs> kills those cops, but not like, like he's dodging bullets. He's like doing spins and flips and he kills them all. And it's like probably a minute fight scene of like this Dark Morbius killing police officers. And Jared Leto just watches after his whole speech <laughs> of we shouldn't kill. He doesn't try to stop at all. He just stands there like. Oh my God. Anyway, okay. So honestly, I think two I, i'd say three i like when he jumps <laughs> I, I mean i i know that's what your letterbox d review is gonna say like <laughs> i like the theme where he jumps but, but like 
it is, is one of those is it i mean obviously you just watched it but like mm-hmm. is it the worst comic book movie because you've seen fan four stick you've seen batman and robin you've seen fan four stick have you seen catwoman uh i actually haven't seen Cat- catwoman don't don't do it i won't have you seen, yeah. you've seen green lantern like yes. you've seen a lot of bad comic book movies i don't Where does mind it <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of like that too. But no. but what rank in the bad comic book movies? Oh wow, I think it actually is the worst. Wow, I think because Fantastic, I think the beginning is decent before they get their powers. Wow, and I think in Fantastic when they first get it, how it's like kind of like a body horror movie. That's not bad. It's the rest that's bad. Well, this has no redeeming factors besides some jumping. And honestly. <laughs> Well, maybe your own popular opinion, but I don't think Jerry Little is that bad of an actor. I think like he has some I mean, terrible deliveries, but I don't think he's an awful actor. He's a good actor. He's a weirdo, but he's yeah, a good he, actor. He real, yeah, of course he's very. He's, he might be a cult leader, but might be or is. But like he knows what he's doing, except for when he has to talk to Vulture in an end credit scene that was clearly filmed like a month ago. Yeah, that was that was really weird. And and just the Vulture delivery line, like that like that literally sounded like they did one take and they're like, yeah, that'll be good to go. Like they're, at the start of the movie, he's explaining his sickness to someone and it's like, oh, I forgot Jared Little actually knows how to act. <laughs> right, right. He's like, actually like an Academy Award winning actor. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he... You know, I know people don't like him, but I don't think he's that bad. Poor, poor Jared Leto. He's been Morbius and Joker and Suicide Squad. That's a tough resume. He has played the worst character in Marvel and the worst character in DC, essentially. Wow. <laughs> Portrayals, yeah, but ah, I don't know. Ah, ah. I, I think I'll give it a three, maybe three and a half. Wow. Yeah. I'm like saying, like, yeah, you know, I'll we'll give it a three. Like, it's not. So, so between your three to three and a half. Uh, Drew's at a two. It's just not a good movie. Don't see it. <laughs> yeah, I, but actually, I'm like, I'm seriously saying, don't see it. Even if you're, oh, it sounds so bad, I kind of want to see what it's about. Like, I don't want this movie to make money. As bad, as sad as that sounds, I don't want this universe to continue. Just g- give your Marvel, give your Spider-Man rights to Sony, or I mean, I mean to, that, to Marvel Studios. Well, oh, oh, you oh, heard it here first. Hunter no. wants Sony to have all the rights to all, every Marvel character, or do what JD said. Do Spider Man twenty ninety nine? Do yeah, just do just Spider-Man do an actual Spider Man character, not Morbius. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I'm trying to think of like an equivalent, like like who would be the Batman villain equivalent? Like um, like when you do a Man Bat solo movie, yeah, that's basically what this would have that, been. That'd be Morbius, yeah. right? Like like yeah. let's do Kirk, Doctor Kirk Langstorm, and and he gets this disease where he turns into a bat. Oh my god, that literally is the same. That would be the, the same, same thing. Only he looks like that. Morbius Ugh. just looks like Jared Leto with kind of like where you have tape and put your nose up. <laughs> uh, this has been our um, hour. I call it hour because I only got to watch the postcard scene. But this has been our review of Morbius. Thank God I didn't spend fifteen dollars on a ticket. Yeah, I kind of envy you. Oh. <laughs> Did you see Moon Knight? I've seen some clips, but I haven't watched the episode. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna I'm not gonna watch it weekly. I think I'm just gonna watch it all when it drops because I, I, li- I like to just binge it. Yeah, that's fair. I'll, I'm, I'm probably gonna run into spoilers, but whatever. I, I mean, like, I, I hate weekly releases. Yeah, I I do wish they would release it all at once. If they announced that they release these Marvel, like if they announced Kenobi was all coming out at once, I would book the day off work. <laughs> that would be that would be so good. six hours. <laughs> like, I would straight up book it off. That would be amazing. So, like, they, I feel like they, I mean, the, the Marvel movies. Netflix shows did that, right? They all dropped at yeah. once. I watched Daredevil season two and three all in one day. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it was good, but it, that's like 11 hours. Straight. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. Uh, I understand why they do it weekly. It's just to create the discussion to continue on throughout the week. Yeah. No, I mean, it makes sense. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of annoying. So, I'll probably just watch it when it's all done. Yeah, that's fair. It was good. I won't go into deep. I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, on the opposite scale of Marvius, where I heard nothing but bad things, I've now heard nothing but good things on Moon Knight. Now, like I, I've enjoyed the Disney Plus Marvel shows, but bias aside, they all have the same problem, and this show doesn't run into that. The problem being, the villains always revealed at the last episode or the second last episode. That's what happened with Hawkeye. It happened with technically it happened with Loki. It happened with. Falcon the Winter Soldier was like the old the main reveal of oh this person's actually been bad this whole time. WandaVision, Agatha's been bad the whole time. 
the first scene of Moon Knight is the villain, and he's clearly a villain. He's not pretending he's a hero or anything. It's clearly like this is the antagonist of the show, and he's going to be developed throughout these six episodes with Moon Knight. So that that's a plus for me. It's also there's no older characters like that have been adapted in the MCU already. This whole show is going to be set. It's still in the MCU, but they're not going to be like shouting at references every so often. And they're going to be mentioned. They will probably name drop the Avengers. They'll probably mention the snap, but that's not the focus of this at all. It's very much about Moon Knight. And it's cool. It's it's well written. It, it's a slow, but like in a good way. You know, I mean, you're you're the Moon Knight expert now because apparently. this entire month, this entire month, you've read nothing but Moon Knight. So, yeah, and all like modern Moon Knight. So, mm-hmm. 2006 and up because you had so, nothing. So, so that. as the Moon Knight fan, like as someone who's been reading the comics, <laughs> is it you know up to snuff of what you expect from the character? Yeah, they're doing a lot of modern stuff and not waiting for it. If that makes sense, like Contro. Uh, Moon, I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I mean, I've only read it, comics of Moon. I haven't played any games. I know he's in Marvel Ultimate Alliance or something, but Concho is his god. Maybe it's Concho. I've always read Concho in my head. I feel like I'm going to say it wrong. I'm waiting for them to say it in the show, but they haven't yet. Concho has not a big role early on in like early 2000s Moon Knight, except the whole point of him is the last person Moon Knight kills, Concho looks like that which I think everyone thought was dumb instead of looking like his true form where he has like the bird skull head and everything and he looks like an Egyptian god. Right. And this show, they're showing Concho right away. You're hearing Concho, you're, he's seeing Concho in the corner of his eye everywhere and in dark corners and stuff. And I like that because that's like 2010 Moon Knight. Concho's, Concho's always watching. That's the whole thing. And now they're doing that right away. Uh, S- Stephen Grant, Mark Spector, Moon Knight. He has technically five personalities if you count Moon Knight as one. So far, this first episode, they only pretty much focus on Steven, who right. is like the probably the least interesting one, but they may, I think there's a reason they did that because he's not that interesting. So it makes the other like personalities that he has really intriguing. You want to see more of that. The whole thing right. is like Mark Spector and Moon Knight, those are the two very violent ones. And technically Jake Lockley too in the most recent Moon Knight run, but I don't know if he'll do that because that's coming out right now. But right. Mark, Mark Spector is a mercenary. Stephen Grant is in the comics. He's just a business guy. In this, he's a he's a museum gift shop person. So uh, they're they're making Mark. They're showing Mark as a this violent person. Moon is this violent person without being R rated because the whole episode. This is not a spoiler to the plot. It's just something really clever. I don't know if you saw this or not, but it's all in Stephen Grant's perspective. So he keeps passing out and waking up, and there's bodies all around him. Yeah. Or he'll be driving past him, wake up, and suddenly there's a gun in his hand and he's covered in blood kind of thing. So you don't see Mark. You just see Steven freaking out over this because he doesn't realize that he has this. And then suddenly like, oh, it's Friday. And then I wake, I pass on, wake up, and it's Monday kind of thing. So right, it's good, though. Uh, we, we only see Moon Knight for about like five seconds in this episode. It's really teasing it. But it's the suit looks great and it's really cool. And. I honestly think you'll like it. I know you didn't like Loki. I don't know your opinions on the other ones, actually. I, I think they're all... I mean, I, it's not that I don't like any of them. I think they're all pretty okay. I just feel like I didn't need to watch them. Yeah. I think Hawkeye, I think Hawkeye was the worst one. But I think that... Like, if I didn't watch any of them, and I just, like, you know, watch the movies... I don't know. Like, I, I don't feel like I would have missed the beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Like... <laughs> uh endgame ends with the vision dead and wandavision ends with vision dead like like i think they and obviously they do that on purpose like so you don't have to watch the show as a tie-in it's kind of just like an added bonus but like yeah like even I, even with Falcon i want there to be like some movie. kind of weight of like like there's like you need to watch this you know yeah which for moon knight although we obviously we'll see him again in the future of the mcu maybe in an avengers movie or something like that this is just his origin but it's right. a good origin Kind right of. so 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 that i'm a little more interested in because the rest of them were characters that we had pretty much already yeah it's just what they've like been, been doing with. yeah like kind of like the in between of their next movie so like if someone skipped falcon the winter soldier they would still sam, understand sam is still cap yeah yeah and game ended with sam getting to be captain america yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, i mean you'd miss i guess a little bit of the building but like you'd be like all right yeah it makes sense yeah exactly you don't have to see how he rejected the shield at first and then he got it back like you don't right. need that in the end right 
Moon Knight, I'm sure you don't need, but it's you don't it's still good. Like it's gonna be entertaining. So far, so good. I have a lot of hope for it. Uh there's a there's a few Easter eggs. Uh he has a friend called Frenchie in the comics, and his name was in a cell phone. So there's a, there's a couple little things here and there that I caught, but all in all, like it's just enjoyable. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, <laughs> that was me during that. Also, he talks to a stature in this, who's apparently this guy named Crawley who works with Moon Knight in the 2006 and 2016 run, but he's just a statue in, in the comics. He's the guy, so I guess it was just a reference. <laughs> I didn't catch that, but I saw online that it was credited that that was Crawley. But yeah, I, I still recommend it. And those are our reviews of live action stuff of the week. Maybe we'll me talk react, a bit more. Me, me just reacting to Hunter's reviews. It's exactly. It's a good way to go. Maybe we'll things. talk a bit more Moon Knight next week if something major happens. Or Maybe we'll talk about Morbius again after the second viewing. <laughs> what? We'll probably see three more times until then. But besides that, Doctor Strange is next, which you okay. will see, right? Come on now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sam Raimi, uh, baby, come on now. More, more, you didn't see Morbius, so I don't know. Dr. Oh Strange. my god, I didn't see Morbius. <laughs> Just making sure. The first bit of news, I guess, Dr. Strange tickets go on sale apparently April 4th, so be on the lookout. Or April 6th, it's one of the two days, so be on the lookout. Uh, we got a little bit of news this week, and then we'll get jumping into the comics. Uh, Samuel, for Marvel news real quick, I have Samuel Jackson straight up did an interview just talking about I don't know what he was talking. I think he was talking about. I don't know what he was talking about. Let me be honest. <laughs> Someone said, "Hey, you're in Secret Invasion. What's it like to be back as Nick Fury?" And he says, "Well, I'm also in the Marvels in Ant Man three, so th- I've been Nick Fury for a few months." And oh. he's like, "Oh, I don't know if you're supposed <laughs> to say that, but okay." <laughs> so yeah, he's gonna be. Aren't a they supposed to be doing like a Nick Fury show? That's what Secret Invasion. That's what's it. Is, now, didn't yeah. Secret Invasion get canceled or am I bugging? Did I dream this? You definitely dreamt that. <laughs> okay. Because for some reason, in my, like, in my head, I had it that it got canceled. And I was like, oh, that's crazy that Marvel canceled something. But okay, then I'm bugging. Yeah, Inhumans. <laughs> wow. The Inhumans movie. Oh, you know, my God. What we do? That was going to happen at one point. But yeah, Nick Fury will be in uh, Captain Marvel okay, 2, that's... which seems expecting. But I mean, yeah, MN, that makes sense. MN3, that sounds pretty interesting. I wonder if he'll actually be in it or just like a credit scene. Yeah, just he's at a funeral again, like he wasn't. Uh, you told me this right before. Shang Shang Chi is getting a reboot, or no, sorry, no, a relaunch in the comics again. Right. So Shang Chi has a title right now. It's at like what, like maybe issue 10? 12. 12. So Shang Chi had a book for like a mini, right? And then it went into a book. It like had an ongoing. A, it had a, two one shots and then two minis, two, and then two one shots, two minis, and ongoing. Now it's relaunching at number one, and it's the same writer, same artist, but it's just going to be called Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, I guess, to match the movie. A little weird because the movie came out like a while ago now. And yeah. Why relaunch it? I mean, I get it. It's a sales thing. And oh, let's match the movie. But like, why? Yeah, I, I it thought me. it was fairly successful. too. <laughs> I I don't even know. Like it, to me, that makes I thought no it was sense, getting good but... sales, but yeah, in the past, well, I mean, like, but but it doesn't matter about sales apparently because look at Zdarsky's Daredevil, right? That's going back to number one. Obviously, that was selling well. Yeah, like in the past two years, uh, he's had so many different series. So many. He's had one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth issue one, Shang Chi issue one, and even then, Harper was just telling us. Uh, the Ten Rings have nothing to do with him in the comics, right? I get this right. is the, like the manor is him. not the manor is not his father. Yeah, I get this is like getting him to get to the Ten Rings and everything. Also, they look like the MCU Ten Rings, like the bracelets instead of the rings yeah. on the cover. So yeah. maybe this is a different Ten Rings. Who knows? It's I, I just I question like and I and I hate it on both sides. Both companies do it, Marvel and DC. It drives me mm-hmm. nuts. You, you undermine the value of a number one when you have 10,000 number ones, you know? Exactly. And it's so annoying. Like, like Daredevil is like the worst one now. Like how many times have restarted? Like when it restarted in 1998, that was like a crazy thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, oh my God, like the, you know, the new Daredevil number one. Since then it's rebooted like three times, four times. Yeah. And in two weeks again. Yeah. And like, it's, it's crazy. No, so, no, I'm sorry. One month, not two weeks. But yeah. It's, it's annoying. It, and even then like you could have given shang chi the 10 rings you I'm like i'm okay with him getting the 10 rings i'm okay with the me and my bracelets like the movie you could have just did that in his current series exactly and and 
if you were going to name the title this, why didn't you do it when you started this one? <laughs> and issue 12, I don't know if you saw the cover for issue 12, which is the one that's about to come out. It shows him with the 10 rings and it says like, behold, the 10 rings. Like, oh, God. he's already getting it. Oh. Like, like, I shouldn't be mad because I don't even read the book, so what does it matter? But like, it, 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 <laughs> yeah. just, it irks me. No, I understand. Um, for that, that's all I have for Marvel news this week. I'm gonna miss a few things, but those are the big ones for DC news. DC Universe is launching world worldwide. Uh, it's a Canada now. It's coming to Europe, I think, next yeah! week. I think it comes to Australia next week, but it's like slowly, slowly going worldwide. A- avid listeners of the podcast will remember when Jim Lee promised a young hunter in 2018 mm-hmm. when when Hunter said, "Hey, when's DC Universe going to be in Canada?" He said, "It's it's coming at you soon." He said, sooner than you think. Well, I, 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 I thought what did he you said think, that. Did you think four years? No, I, I thought like maybe maybe a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess not. I'm like, I really want to watch Titans, but there's no way I can watch Titans. <laughs> that was when season one was just about oh, to come well, out. Well, that's when DC Universe was actually for the shows. And then that just... Exactly. I'm like, I, I really like Young Justice, Jim Lee, and there's no way I could legally watch it in Canada. He's like, well, stay tuned. Pirate's life is for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, Jim. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, it's it's cool that it's expanding, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. It, like, I, I currently use DC Universe. I like it. You know, it's just the comics now, but it's good. It's, it's I think it's 5 or $6 a month, but oh, it's free. I don't know why it's free, but I'll take it. But uh, <laughs> they just still haven't charged me. I mean, I'm I'm expecting them to. But yeah, that's nice. Um, but it's it's like five or six dollars a month, so it's a pretty good deal. And if you do the yearly plan, it's even less. And they got. I mean, I haven't like really run into problems with trying to find something. The only the only thing they don't have is like the novels. Like Watchmen's not on there. The Earth One books are not on there. Oh, Killing okay. Joke, like things that like weren't like single issue are. They're volumes, there. yeah. But other than that, they've had pretty much anything I needed. The, it's actually like high res scans, like even for older stuff, and I, I like it. I, it's like I, Marvel Unlimited, and you can read on the computer, which you can't do on Marvel Unlimited. Oh, that's nice. So. The, I, I'm thinking about maybe getting in the summer. I wouldn't mind reading Tim Drake's Robin Run. I've never uh, read that before. You've recommended it before as well. Just read it this month. Also, part of me wants to force myself. This is a comic that everyone's read. But, and everyone says it's not good. I've never read it before. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh, man. I mean, I've never read went, it. You just went through Secret Wars. So I guess, you know, you could make it. It's just like that 12 issues would literally feel like like a marathon. You're just like, oh, my God, when will it end? It's, that's what everyone says, which is why I've never like, I feel like I know everything about it. Yeah, I like, mean, you as long as you know like the kind of important aspects that come out of it, like it really I know the plot, read, I know but... who lives, I know who dies, I know the ending. Like I just, but it's it's kind of like Secret Wars, right? Like not a lot of people have actually read it; they just know it's like oh, like the original. Like, yeah, the original like, Secret Wars. Oh, okay, but, like, yeah. they know like the impact of it, and they know like yeah, because I read the original Secret Wars in January, and that was not that's a late that's a labor of a read. Like it, it's a cool story. It's a really interesting dynamic. It's got a good ending. It's got a good start. But then there's those 12 issues where it's like, I mean, oh, that, that's, how many... that's literally Christ on infinite earth. So that's, you know, yeah. it's, you know, the death of the flash is cool. And like, you know, when they take death down the super girl, it's cool. Yeah. Supergirl. But in, in the between, you're just like, all right, this is, yeah. Like us. secret wars is like, how many times do I have to see Captain America punch someone? <laughs> I get it. Let's move on. Cause that's the whole thing is like, it's, it's a big fight scene. It's like, okay, yeah. let's move on. It's got a few good moments, but yeah. But yeah, D- DC Universe would be pretty good. I mean, obviously, I know you're, you know, you love to read in physical, but now you could finally, you know, like finish reading. I mean, you, could, you could read Jeff's Green Lantern, even though I know you want to read a physical. I do um, want to read that physical. You could read all of Mark Wade's Flash, so you could finally become a Flash mm-hmm. fiend. Yeah. And, you know, can. there's a lot of great runs for you to read. I'm okay with digital, with, with like streaming. Like, I read Moon Knight. Most of Moon Knight was digital. You've, you've um, come a long way. I just Old Hunter would have never. That. Uh, exactly <laughs> uh you i think you have this ready uh dc announced round robin 2 this is round uh, and a lot of people tournament. are mad what i haven't what actually so yeah a lot of people are mad because all right so for those who don't remember last was it last year I mean, or was it only a few it doesn't feel like it was that long ago it's either but a year or a year and a half might, ago. might have been a year ago dc did a round robin event where it was something like 
I think 16 titles competed in like a tournament style. Like you vote on it, 16 pitches and one will become a book. Um, last time around there was uh, Robins, which was a book about the four Robins, which everyone knew was going to dominate. And five, that one Stephanie. Ended up, five, sorry. Stephanie and, as well. <laughs> no, no, I, I know. I forgot. Yeah. Um, but that, that book like dominated through the tournament and it won. A lot of a lot of people felt like it wasn't fair because like that's a pretty big book to be in there while the rest were kind of more obscure titles. But good um, pitches in the end. It's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love, mean, like JD and I were just like, it would be so great to have a solo Kyle Rayner story. Right, right. There's like, a Kyle Rayner and Kilowog story. Obviously, a general audience is gonna be like the Robins together. They're gonna right, and especially when like it's just on the Instagram story, people who aren't even gonna read the book are voting. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So. So that one was a little skewed, but it was a good idea. Like I, I liked the concept of it. And there were a lot of interesting pitches in there. There were some that I would never read, but there were some that were interesting. Yeah, can Edda Candy had a title. Oh, <laughs> I think the, that one lost. I, like, like I genuinely hope someone wrote a script for that because <laughs> like what, so what was that pitch? <laughs> Edda Candy eats candy. Six issues. And I think it was up against the Kyle Rayner book round one and it just got destroyed. <laughs> destroyed. Even general audience is going to be like at a candy versus a Green Lantern. <laughs> you have to know what Kyle is and you'll vote Green Lantern. I wish I could have like bought like a like a follower thing where like they just they could vote for whatever I want so I could make the at a candy book win like just hack everything. That'd be so weird. <laughs> <laughs> just to make DC do it. But anyway, so they're, they're doing another one uh, this year um this time there's no batman themed books which i think is already a step up from the last one because it gives everything else a little bit more of a fair chance mm -hmm. um but a lot of people were mad online they were like why not make all the books like why make us pit them against each other it's a good opportunity to see what people want to read i know it's a little bit generalistic because instagram and twitter can vote but like you know it, it kind of gives you a little skin in the game like being like nah this is the one we want to see you know so i don't I don't have a problem with it. Listen, I wish more of them were made that are like actually good pitches, but like at the end of the day, you know, may the best book win. Yeah, that's a good point. And I wish we didn't live in a DC universe where like Batman Reptilian is a book and, you know, some of these can't be, but yeah, that's just the world we're living in. Batman One Dark Knight, I think is one. Batman Fortress is one. <laughs> Batman <laughs> Imposter. I saw that at a comic store today. I hate it here. <laughs> There's so um, many. <laughs> anyway th this time around um there's 16 books um I'll, I'll read them off real quick just the uh titles of them uh hawkman and hawkwoman the challenging wildcat nine lives the questions grand solution constantine and the demon vacation from hell suicide squad dark justice league redacted firestorm fourth world problems kid flash the speed of fear black canary when canaries cry Green Lantern, The Light at the End of Forever, DC Horror Presents Ghost Tour from Hell, Animal Man, The Metamorphosis, Green Lantern, The Birth of Conspiracy, Captain Carrot and His Best Friend Darkseid, Superboy, The Man of Tomorrow, and Cyborg, Cyber Gods. So a pretty, you know, diverse set of books of like different, you know, some kind of bigger characters like Green Lantern, but some like smaller characters like Wildcat hasn't been in anything in forever. So mm -hmm. You know, I, no I, Batman characters at all. Not even like no Night, Batman, Nightwing, or and, nothing. And really. I like that because they Me already too. have books. You know, the, these are mostly people who don't have books. Like I'm trying to think, like one of the stories that John Stewart, and I guess he's technically the head of the Green Lantern book right now, which and is the, no longer a thing. book. So those two, right? So th but those two at least have been in recent comics. But the rest of them, like we haven't seen Constantine since Just League Dark got canceled. Mm -hmm. um you know like superboy was in that this is young justice so he's giving me a dark crisis oh he, he's right. in a suicide squad i guess but like <laughs> oh yeah but but so there's a lot of these characters that like you know aren't seen as often you know black canary hasn't really been a whole lot mm -hmm. even though she was in justice league but it's been this justice league so <laughs> Captain you know so, <laughs> oh, i don't think anybody cares but you know it, it's, it is nice to see like you know some of these books but yeah, a lot of people were mad online. I don't know. I don't get it. Like, just it, just take it for what it is, you know? It, it, some of them sound really good, too. Like, two Green Lantern titles as well. Yeah, one was about Alan Scott, and then mm -hmm. the other one was about Jon Stewart. So, mm -hmm. no uh, Highball Hal, which is uh, interesting. Yeah, I was maybe. hoping the Kyle Rayner one was going to make its way back in. Like, I... I <laughs> 
I guess because none of the pictures were repeated, but I was like, man, I really want to see that book. Yeah, me too. I, what you mean? But I don't know. I, what's what's your favorite of these? What do you want to win? Um, I I guess as the Flash guy, I should be saying Kid Flash, but the the pitch for it talks about Parallax and Reverse Flash, and my mind just is like, why is Wallace West dealing with this? <laughs> like, if if Reverse Flash and Parallax were, to, I mean, that's the biggest Flash villain and arguably like the most powerful green lantern right. you know entity like why would wallace west be handling this? it seems like a barry and owl team up right right and based on the pitch it probably should be a at least a flashing green lantern i don't even care which pair but yeah. uh yeah i mean i don't know it's a little weird that it's just wallace handling it but i guess it'd be some character development so i don't mind that one um mm-hmm. the superboy one sounds cool because i love 90s superboy and then um, I thought the Alan Scott Green Lantern one was cool. That um, one sounded better than the John based on the pitch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, the birth of conspiracy, like UFOs in the forties. Like that's that's kind of cool. Did you already vote? I uh, yeah. So I have a DC Universe account, so I was able to vote on there and and I vote on Instagram as well. Yeah, I, I, did, Twitter, I voted but... Instagram and Twitter. Um, okay. Well, they already did the who's against who. They, I don't know, you know, the winners yeah, yet, but the, yeah, the you... first round, I mean, most of them are pretty already decided by just the votes. Like, um, for example, the Black Canary one went up against uh, the Jon Stewart one. Yeah. And the Green Lantern one won on everyone except for, I think, Instagram or except for DC. On one. Uh, Black Canary only won one out of three. So I, I'm guessing that one's going to be out. I prefer, I voted Black Canary for that one. Yeah, I voted Black Canary too. Not the biggest Jon Stewart fan. Me too, but, yeah. And I thought the Black Canary pitch sounded more interesting uh okay well, would you vote for hawkman and hawkwoman versus wildcat i voted for wildcat Damn. um I, I don't think either of those ones would win in the long term but i think the wildcat one sounded more interesting than you know nine I lives agree. i agree that could be interesting uh question versus constantine i i want to say i voted for a question on this one i did too but i, I like her name on toya so that was kind of my reasoning unpopular opinion i don't really like constantine I don't have a problem with them. I just never cared for him. So. I, could, I could kind of agree with that, though. I just I don't care when he shows up <laughs> in yeah. other books, and I'm not, I've never read a solo series of this. Uh, Suicide Squad Dark versus Justice League Redacted. This one, like, I feel like one of these two is going to win, unfortunately, and I'm just like... Uh, I voted I, Justice League. Yeah, I voted for Justice League, too, because it's at least got Green Arrow, but the team doesn't really sound that good. Mm-hmm. Or sorry, the villain lineup: Nemesis, Killer Frost, Manhunter, Metamorpho, and Cheshire. Uh, yeah, it's like okay. <laughs> uh, Firestorm versus Kid Flash. Kid Flash. Kid Flash. Yeah, I vote Kid Flash too. I don't mind. Even Firestorm. though if, if, if that was a Flash and Green Lantern book, like that with would the win, same pitch, but Flash, and Green, I think that would win. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Even if it was you know Barry and Hal, Kyle and Wally, or even Alan and Jay, I think it would have just wrecked. Oh, that would have been so good. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> JSA, yeah. Uh Ghost from Hell, is it? Versus Animal yeah, Man? Yeah, DC Horror presents Ghost from Hell versus uh Animal Man. Yeah. I think I voted for Animal Man. I voted Animal Man. I don't think he's he's gonna win though. Yeah. Um then Green Lantern Balance Scott versus Captain Carrot. I think we both obviously both Captain Green Carrot. <laughs> oh, okay. No, Although I Captain Carrot and my best friend Dark Side, that sounds like a funny, like just a fun book. Yeah, that only yeah, I, I voted for a Green Lantern and Same. then Superboy Man of Tomorrow over Cyborg Cyber Gods. I am not a fool who has read Cyborg solo series, so I voted for Superboy. I voted for Superboy too, though. I kind of wish Cyborg was against a different thing so they could go up to round two. Yeah, but no, oh well. it'll be oh interesting well. to see what wins. If you had to put a bet on which one is going to win it all, which are you taking? Not what you want to see, but what do you think is going to win it all? Justice League Redacted. Yeah, I feel like the winner of Justice League Redacted Suicide Squad is going to go on to win it all, just because those are the most recognizable names. And when you take into it, you know, into account the social media votes, it's just a little overwhelming. But like next week, we're going to probably see Justice League Redacted versus Kid Flash. That's going to be a tough one. Right. I'm going to be voting Kid Flash for that. But we'll see. What same. Happens. Same here. I mean, I think like if, if I had to bring it to my final votes, I'm going to go for the Alan Scott Green Lantern one. The uh, Kid Flash one and then the Superboy one are going to be like my main three to root for, but mm-hmm. we'll we'll see. I have a feeling either the Just League one or Suicide Squad one is going to get made. Yeah, exactly. But I, I like the round robin idea. I think it's like kind of an interesting premise. And 
like I haven't even read Robins yet. I probably might read it at some point because it's on DC Universe. Like it's easy to read, but like, like it's crazy. Like that was the big fuss last year, and like I, I didn't even end up reading it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like I didn't even hear anyone really talk about it. So how big was it? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't read it either. <laughs> but all right, that's that's essentially the news of the week. Yeah. Which means it's comic book time. Yeah, you want to talk rogues? I didn't read rogues. My first black label oh, that I own. Real quick before you do that, should we say what we read? Like the number? Oh yeah, for the month. Yeah. So oh, we wait. every month we uh we count up every single back issue that we read, or just issue in general, and we see if we beat each other. <laughs> I so, only count back issues, hundred counts everything. I count everything. Well, you should count everything. I mean, I barely read any ongoings anyway. It would not really change the number. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Okay, I got my number. 182. What? (laughs) Oh, you have never... That's actually my least... That's actually my least read of 2022. I I read more in February and January. Talk about what you read. Jeez, I'm... 122. I thought that was a lot. How <laughs> about 122? <laughs> you of all Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah, so you read all Moon Knight. You stuck Except for keys. Batman Hush. I read Batman Hush at the start. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I read um, a lot of books, actually. So I finished out yeah. the Stanley Spider-Man or Up to the Death of Gwen Stacy. Um, I read all of Robin, Tim Drake's Robin run on uh, the Dixon run, which is a hundred and... I mean... 112 issues maybe so that was most of my issues for the month i didn't even know it went past 100 okay yeah well so he has three mini series it's like robin robin two robin three and then they do an ongoing so and then dixon writes the first 100 issues of that so i read all that it goes on to like issue 190 or something like that wow so yeah it's a long run i mean 1993 to 2009 or 2000 yeah 2009 so wow so i read the first 100 issues of that um i read planetary which is a 27 issue run from vertigo um, which not a lot of people talk about. It's pretty good. Um, and then I read some mini series, Doctor Strange, The Oath, and then some uh, Star Wars Legends comics, Star Wars: The Dark Side, and Hair to the Empire, which is the General Thrawn one. Okay. So, yeah, I read a lot this month, one eighty two, but it's my least amount for twenty twenty two because I read way more in February and January. So, out of curiosity, because I'm going to read Doctor Strange the Oath like right away here. What do you rate it? Out of ten. Ten out of ten whoa okay. it was great it was great no I'm I, like I'm like excited. i had always heard good things about it and harper had obviously talked it up as the dr strange guy but I, I loved it it was great yeah like the very the very first panel starts with like uh in a waiting room and like there's like music and like the way they draw the music coming out of the speaker looks at like you know you see the lyrics and like the lines coming out of the speaker mm, which is cool and it's a frank sinatra song that's playing <laughs> so even though you can't hear it i was just like yeah you, you, you already won me over <laughs> but but the story was actually really good and as someone who's never read strange before it was like easy to get into so there was like no real knowledge known i mean as long as you've seen the movies you're or the movie you're good do you think you'll continue with a bit more dr strange this month yeah yeah i want to read um mark wade's but i'll probably mm-hmm. go to harper for recommendations like wait which one should i read first but that mm-hmm. one really made me want to read more strange so i think you're gonna like the oath yeah, I plan on reading Wade's as well, and I want to read Jason Aaron's too, and Donny Cates. For, I don't know for April, are you doing only Strange or no? I don't not only, but I do plan on reading like a few Strange titles for sure. Yeah, but I can't believe you read all Moon Knight. Like that's crazy. It was, I mean, think about Moon Knight comics for binging. The highs are like peak. Like this is like some of the best Marvel stuff ever, and the lows are really low. <laughs> It's like, right. ooh, this is the, I, I can't believe the Bendis uh, Believe one is the worst one. Like, that shocked me because their Daredevil is so good. It's disrespectful for the character, but it's very short. The Houston and David Finch one, I didn't like that. Ah, oh, that's sad. Yeah. That's good art. It, it you is love, you art, love David Finch. I even I looked up online, like, do people like this? No, they don't. Oh, so I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Because it's the one where he rips off the guy's face. Oh. And at the time, people use it as like people use that scene, like, see, look, Moon Knight's already, he's edgy. But I guess at the time when it came out, a lot of people dropped the book instantly because it's like uh, this was 2006, and they're just like, oh, why? Like, what? It's, it's kind of like the same as like when people use like an all star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, uh, yeah, panel exactly. to like justify something in the DCEU. 
it's just like yes it happened yes it's canon and it's still brought up often in comics today but it's still like that didn't need to happen like why did it's too edgy for the sake of being edgy it doesn't drive the story much but yeah i won't get into it which was which was your favorite moon knight that you read like what oh, was your favorite one? the greg smallwood run which i think you should read that's the one with jeff lemire yeah, yep okay yeah that, that's the one i was i have in my marvel unlimited library yep. it's like only 16 issues it's 14 actually 14 issues yeah so 14. I, I was gonna read that one. Oh my god oh like you should read it right away yeah that blew me away i was like oh the cover insane. to issue one is really cool with him and like the padded uh, exactly roof. and you don't need to know anything going in like issue starts he's in a he's in a mental asylum and he doesn't know why he's like wait oh well, how to get here and right. that's how it starts and it's so interesting <laughs> yeah i should i should read that this month definitely read it. it's 14 issues that's it you can read it in like a day or two but oh my god <laughs> it's in my top 10 i think ever for runs. wow that blew me away that made me like i, I was kind of like moon knight's all right like he's all right but as soon as i got to that i'm like oh my god this is like perfect i wish it went on longer but yeah that's 10 out, that was my 10 out of 10 yeah but so yeah. so for april now dr strange mm-hmm. what else is you know in the plan to be read uh, what or is it just whatever comes your way whatever whatever comes my way whatever gets recommended yeah. to me that it sounds interesting oh uh, you read the daredevil comic that harper recommended redemption or something daredevil redemption oh yeah i read that in january yeah i might check that out but yeah that's that's a short read yeah i don't know i'm, I'm mostly marvel unlimited I, I can't afford to buy trades or anything i'm not gonna get dc universe so it's gonna be marvel stuff but i don't know We'll see what I so, so you hear that Hunter is taking recommendations as we speak. I, I literally am, yeah. To give me some recommendations. I plan on reading a lot of Thor in, in May to the classic Thor stories to lead up to Love and Thunder, but because I've read a, I've read pretty much all of modern Thor outside of like 90s and stuff. So right. But yeah, besides Thor, because that's gonna be my main thing, uh, and Doctor Strange, because that's my current thing. Let me know what you think I would enjoy and yeah, I mean the the oath, the oath is definitely going to be good. For I'll you. be reading I think, that. I think, I, read I think that. I'm going to be reading that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean I read that. I was only going to read like an issue a day, but like after the first issue, I was like, all right, I got to keep going. Yeah, it, it starts with a bang. I mean, you you know like the premise, right? You get shot. You know? Yeah, so like it starts with it starts with like a big like like whoa, and then like it just it whew, takes off like it's so good. So I'm excited. yeah, I, I'm smiling just thinking about it. Like it, it was that good. Of a story. Like I was with Moon Knight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like if i had to do like a, like my favorite miniseries ever and i know i'm going full hunter here but like it's definitely my top 10 miniseries ever uh, yeah no i'm it might it'll probably be a mine i'll probably read it to, like i said tomorrow and you should read moon knight too but yeah no it, it's it's in my marvel unlimited library i gotta read it um this month i'm probably gonna be reading well i'm reading jeff john's flash again trying to go off to flashpoint because flashpoint the sequel oh, happens right. this month so yeah. i want to like i haven't read flashpoint since like 2014 same. so it's, same. it's been quite a while i've so only I ever read it once read through that yeah, yeah. same here mm-hmm. flashpoint and rebirth 09 i've only read once and it was in like 2014 so it's something that like i want to revisit really i've read rebirth that, 09 a few times because i was like such a different reader back then like like yeah. in 20 in when when i was 14 i read batman hush and rebirth 09 and i was like these are the greatest comics ever There's and then like two I, flashes <laughs> and then like i you know like i expanded my you know comics and i was like oh wow like those are overrated but now i came back to them and i'm like no hush is still great why am i calling it overrated yeah i call it overrated too and then we both just reread it I'm like wait this is actually like, really no, good why, why am i doing this this is great so that's why like, i want to revisit those Jubilee. flash books Jubilee does draw the best Gotham City. <laughs> Jubilee does make a great rogues gallery. He does. <laughs> oh my god, so good. But so that's why I want to read it again. I think like it'll be nice to revisit it, and you know, I, I think I'll like it, and it'll get me ready for Flashpoint Beyond because I, you know, I remember the highlights of Flashpoint, but not exactly. much else. Mm-hmm. So. Exactly. But yeah, uh, Jeff Lemire's Moon Knight. Um, I'm actually reading. Uh, I just started it yesterday. Um, Darth Vader, or sorry, started it today uh darth vader um soul? not the soul I, I read the soul one the other one uh karen gillen oh, okay the one that came before the soul one mm-hmm. uh that's the one where like dr afra 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 i haven't I read it so. name is. She, she's in that one so i'll okay. read that it's a short run as well so got cool. a few things working for april you know i gotta i gotta give you a number that's gonna blow you away yeah <laughs> you already did 
you, yeah. you, you saw my reaction. I, I thought I beat you for some reason because you weren't I, talking about what you were reading this month. I, I got to beat you. Got to beat Tyler. All on a day's work. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, uh, rogues. Rogues. Rogues was cool. Um, this is my first black label book. These things are gigantic. I like don't even know what to do with it though. Like this is kind of my problem with with black label. It's a cool idea, but I can't fit this in my comic box, and I don't have a bag and board for it. Yeah, mine's just sitting on my trade shelf, my, like what, my black label stuff. What the hell do I do with it? Like, it's it's huge. I mean, it's cool because the art looks cool, but like, I don't know. I and wish it was. My shop, my shop gives format. me a bag and board for every single issue. They did not give me a bag and board for this. Well, like, how are they going to do that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I need like a custom bag and board. They'll give you like a cardboard box and like a, just a random plastic. Be like, all right, uh, good luck. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to put this on my comic shelf, like my trade shelf, because it's yep. not fitting in the box, like the mm-hmm. comic box. But uh, yeah, this was this was uh, something that I was definitely hyped for um, when it got announced. Joshua Williamson uh, doing like a black label story on the rogues that's like set in the future um it's like a rogues like their last big heist um i didn't really know that much going into it other than that like they're just doing the heist like i actually kind of forgot that it was set in the future so like it starts with uh captain cold like in the present time like you know wearing like the blue hoodie and all that Mm -hmm. and then it flashes forward uh 10 years later and i love the two-page spread here for 10 years later oh that's great wow so that's like that's That's like his that's like his house there like next to the dump and like under the bridge but the colors are really good in this book um and yeah so he's he's like a reformed criminal in this um and he's like working like a shitty job like he has like a parole uh parole board like a parole officer who visits him like oh you up to you up to any crime and he's like no (laughs) he's like an alcoholic too like he's just like depressed um he gets like a like a bump up at his job like he uh what's it promotion at his job i forgot the word promotion i felt i felt very dumb for a minute uh he he gets a promotion at his job and he's like all hyped but he works like a shitty dead-end job and then he finds out that they only promoted him because he already makes no money because he's a criminal so like he's just living like a shitty life like he has to take the bus it's really crowded and he's just like fuck like life sucks so he he like digs into uh into his mattress and he pulls out like these like wires and like gadgets and stuff and he puts together like a new cold gun so like he made it seem like in the beginning that he was you know had nothing on him he had nothing to do with being cold Mm -hmm. but like he still got it um he visits his sister who's like a social worker this is just a golden glider so she's also a rogue so and she doesn't want anything to do with him she's like get away from me we can both get arrested just by talking like i don't want to see you okay and he's like come on i got a heist and and she's like no no i don't want to do it and then he's like you're living a shitty life i'm living a shitty life this could get us out of this shitty life. And she's like, all right, fine. So then he starts recruiting the rogues like one by one, but you find out that um, some of them have died, whether wizard and captain boomerang died at some point here. Oh. So, so not even all of them are alive. Um, he goes to like visit trickster. Who's like a, he's like a con man performer. This is the people's... original trickster. I imagine. Yeah. But he looks like way different. Cause he's got like plastic surgery. Oh, okay. like, he looks like nothing like, like uh, this, is, this is him right here. Like he looks nothing like the trickster. Oh, I like how they made him look like he got plastic surgery. Yeah, yeah. They even bring that up. Like, oh, you're looking a little wrinkly. And he's like, am I? <laughs> but uh, he's, yeah, Len says, uh, you don't look a day over 40. And he goes, 40? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's pretty good. But anyway, um, trickster's like, nah, fuck that. Like I'm making, I'm, I'm doing good things. Like I'm, I'm not working with you. So he starts, he recruits the rogues one by one though. And he gets people like uh, like Magenta, um, the one with mm-hmm. the magnets, yeah. Wally's old girlfriend. Um, like she's trying to get her pills in a pharmacy and her prescription's not there. And she's like freaking out and like all the metal starts spending in the store. And then they come and pay for her, her uh, pills. And they're like, why don't you come visit us? And um, so he's having trouble recruiting all the rogues, but he goes to Heat Wave and, he, and who's burning something. And he's like, hey, you in? And Mick's like, yeah, I'm in. So he's like, <laughs> oh, right away. <laughs> but um so there's there's a bunch of them teamed up and uh captain cole tells them about like this heist that um he heard someone in the bar talk about how gorilla city is like like is the richest city in the world that they're sitting on like nothing but gold and all that Mm -hmm. and that if they could get in there that would be the biggest heist of all time so um he he pitches it and he's like all we got to do is get past gorilla grod and all the rogues are like, all right, I'm out. Like, I'm not doing this. Like, you're going to get us killed. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. Like, this is all we need to change our lives. And we have our secret weapon, the Mirror Master. But Mirror Master isn't there. So they go to break him out of prison. And it goes, like, terribly wrong. Like, they all, 
they get caught like surrounded by the prison guards like right away and mirror master's so doped up on drugs like he can't even escape like he's having trouble moving mm. and uh it gets like really dark so they're surrounded by cops right they all got their hands up they realize they're going back to jail and then uh he freezes all of them so like they're ice and he knocks their head right off so they die like their oh. their bodies like he kills them and Jeez. Then, and Captain Cold's like, like, like we're not like the rogues of the past. Like we're not fucking around. Like this is, this is how serious this is. This is life or death. And hmm. he's like, he's like, uh, the, the rogues are finally formed by the last page. And he's like, next stop, grill the city. So it's a darker version of the rogues. It's you know, rogues who have nothing to lose, and it's their last big heist. Like you know, this I like or death. So I could I like see it. a lot of them dying. <laughs> it's the Suicide Squad, but the Rogues. No, but it, it's cool. Um, the team's interesting too. You know, Magenta. Um, like she's not usually with the Rogues, so like but she's kind of like the powerhouse. And he even says that, like, "Oh, you lost Weather Wizard, so he's got to. Uh, she's got to be your. She's got to be like your powerhouse because you know she's the one that really has powers. So mm-hmm. I was like, that's kind of cool. And she's unpredictable too. When she doesn't have her meds, like she's all you know, crushed metal. So I'm yeah. looking forward to it, and it's set like you know at least ten years in the future. So I'm curious if they're going to have any flash involvement at all. I'm guessing not because you know they're going to Gorilla City, so why would Flash be there? But they, I wouldn't be surprised if they throw in some Flash stuff by the end. If they do, I feel like it'd be like Irie or something. That would be really cool. I mean, it's I mean, Williamson, so you know he he definitely knows his his Flash stuff and. I, uh drew was actually saying to me what if they did old man flash like from the rebirth run like with the mm. gray beard and i was like oh they actually could do that like barry becoming that i would actually really like that yeah so i mean i don't think flash is really going to be in the story much but who knows i mean this was originally started as three issues but it got bumped up to four issues so you know could be good but well, i like cool. the first issue it was a good setup i'm excited to see the rest cool nine out of ten Ooh, wow okay <laughs> yeah i liked it I, I like a good heist story it's like kind of like a crime noir like and just like watching like captain cold get shit on he's like all right fuck this mm-hmm. like i'm not doing this anymore mm-hmm. and like it, like the first page says the word fuck and like i was like oh my god like, black label i've never seen that in a comic <laughs> welcome <to> black label <laughs> yeah i was like oh my god <laughs> yeah it'll do that um real quick uh spider-man beyond is over Thank, thankfully what, what was... are they doing with ben riley like what's so, is he back on the shelf now it ends with ben thinking that peter took his life away and he's very angry at that and so he starts to destroy beyond headquarters and like all these chemical things that they were building start to leak out and so peter goes to save him but ben basically is like nah, nah man you you took my life I'm, I'm out so he he goes he tries to kill himself essentially by jumping into this like acid type thing it was like this green liquid doesn't burn you but he gets knocked out and he goes in and the building falls on him so peter doesn't save him and then there's like an epilogue where he uh he is his girlfriend finds him in the rubble and brings him home but he's seeing like the art's really cool i don't have the issue on me downstairs but the art is like it's very like he sees everything like a sketch so it's like a pencil like just very messy and he's like he's seeing holes in everyone's faces that he looks at he doesn't recognize anyone Right. And he's slowly going insane. But it ends with he gets like a purple Spider-Man suit and he calls himself a name. It's like it's not chat. I thought it was chat at first. It's like chas or something like that. Chat. I can't remember. Did, ah man. Oh, I was gonna say because I'm like I when I first read it, I thought it was chat. I'm like, what <laughs> it's like chas or something, something similar like that. It, I don't right. know, but it's like a purple Spider-Man suit essentially. So and to be continues there. For Peter's story, it ends with um, despite him getting an engagement ring and planning to propose to Mary Jane two years ago, still hasn't, but it, it does develop a bit more of the relationship where uh, he goes on a run with MJ and they go back to her apartment and he's just like, well, I better get going. And she's like, wait, how about you just stay stay for a bit? And he's like, well, I'm a bit of a mess. Like, You gotta have some time away from me. And she's like, Peter, you're always a mess. I want you to move in. And he's like, okay, yeah, that, that sounds nice. So he's moving in with her. And they give you little crumbs of Mary Jane and Peter. They'll never give you the bit. full thing, but little crumbs. They're, they're living together now. At least. What, <laughs> so. what writer is taking over Spider-Man? I forget the writer, but I know it's Romina Jr. Because they, they tease that too. Right, they, right. So they, it's going back to number one. Yep. God, I hate Marvel. Good time to jump on, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we said this at the beginning of Nick Spencer. Remember that first issue with like the dream with the black suit and mm-hmm. him and Mary Jane on top God, of that? God, that, that was such a good start. <laughs> And then it was, boo, 
Yeah, and it was, it was um, what's his name? Ryan Otley on the art. Oh, man, that was cool. Time. That was such and a good They looked start. like Mark and Eve. Oh, what a time. They did, they did. <laughs> Tyler hates that, but yeah, they... I know, I know he hates that. I was, I was just thinking that a like short that. brown hair guy and a redhead girl, like, yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it the this issue ended with uh, Peter and MJ, they, they hug each other and they're, they're like happy again. And Peter's like, Well, I better go get my stuff. And then MJ, like, so, so like, be like, Peter, what's that? He looks, turns around outside the window, there's this like glowing silhouette that just goes like Peter Parker. And then it just lights up and they both scream. And then it says to be continued in Spider-Man number one. Oh, so this is the final issue until Spider-Man number one. Yeah, exactly. Which so is Spider-Man up. number one next month? Uh, well, April, yeah. it's I don't know oh, when shit. in April, but yeah. It's the next issue in The Amazing Spider-Man is Spider-Man number one. So wow. this was the end of Beyond. Uh, Beyond was all right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't care for Ben Riley. So I, right. I cared more about Peter's recovery. <laughs> right. Uh, Hulk uh i'll just real, real quick the whole hulk run has been interesting it's like bruce banner is controlling hulk in like a virtual world where he's able to level up a challenge and the harder the challenge the more hulk the real hulk is able to like grow and get stronger so he's like fighting all these like mutant people this giant spider creature that's like spider-man who screams responsibility <laughs> And he's playing like a bunch of abominations, and the whole time, right? There was like a Wolverine robot at one point. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Well, that's in the Hulk's virtual world where Bruce Banner is like turning it up. So round three was a giant Hulk, and oh. there's ten rounds, and it gets harder each round. So that's what's been really interesting is what's each round. So, so is each is each round like a different issue? Like pretty round much three is issue three. Pretty much, yeah. Gotcha. It started off. I think he was fighting another Hulk, and then I forget what level two was. But level oh level two was just like an army, and then right. the next level is a giant Wolverine, and then after that it goes to either level four I believe, which was Marvel Zombies. So you get the Marvel Universe's zombies that he has to fight, right. and then and the art's really it's right out like so right. that's really brutal and bloody. And then they went to level five, which was gods. So like all of Asgard comes against Thor, including or it comes against Hulk, including Thor and Odin in this virtual world. So they're not real. And then in this issue, they go to level six, which is demons. So I'm like Mephisto and you see like a ghost rider there and like just a ton of demons. And the issue ends with like nukes being dropped on the real Hulk. So Bruce cranks it up to nine and we don't see what nine is. Oh, so that's what's been keeping me going for this is the art and seeing what each level is. So it's confusing. I mean, you, you've but never it's really cool. read Hulk before, right? I mean, you, you read Immortal Hulk or no? No, I didn't. I will, but. I have the I first, read the first volume, issues, but the re- the only reason I'm reading this is because the creative team. I like Donny Cates. I like Ryan Otley. So yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm reading it. And it crosses over with Thor in a few weeks. So I thought there's one part that was a little weird. Um, so there's like these Hulk creatures that this Bruce Banner from another Earth is sending through a portal, and General Ross goes, "Do you even know where you're sending them?" And he goes, and then there's like a little editor's note. You know when there's editors and like, oh, check out this issue to find out. Yeah. This one says, spoiler alert, there is a big place that they're going. Find out at issue nine. This was issue five. Oh. So it's like huge. That's, a, that's four months in the future. I know. It's like, oh, okay. I guess, I guess we'll find out then. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, all oh, it's good. And that, that's good. all I read. And that's pretty yeah. much the show. Mm-hmm. So, uh, thank you for listening to the review of the greatest movie of 2022. I mean, bangers of comic book movies. We had Spider Man No Way Home, we have the Batman, and we have Morbius. Technically, we just got movie. what a lot of people consider. I know you might not, but a lot of people consider the best Spider Man movie. We got the best Batman movie, and this is technically the best Morbius movie. The best movie. Morbius movie. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Next month might be the best Doctor Strange movie, but I mean, this was the best. The, the greatest Morbius movie known to man. Oh my uh, gosh. And the worst comic movie I've ever seen. But. <laughs> so uh, come join us probably next week. I don't even know what comics are out, but we'll Devil's Reign finale. Devil's Reign finale. That That's one that I know. Hyped. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, rate us on iTunes. Like us on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, all that good stuff. You know what to do. Yeah. For Hero Story, I'm JD. I'm Hunter, and we haven't done this outro in a while. And every second is a good. <laughs> Goodbye. And thanks for being here, too, I guess. <laughs>